I Shine, Why and How by Craig Heinzelman In the last few months there have been several posts on various email based discussion groups about the phenomenon called I Shine. This is a reflective nature of light of an animal's eyes. Although at first it may not seem the subject of hominology, when put in the context of reports of Bigfoot exhibiting this condition, then the subject does have a place. These reports, although they do occur, are not one of the most common occurrences. But what causes this condition of eye shine, and why does it occur, and what correlation could it have to the area of hominology? Before an understanding of the cause and reason for the eye shine condition, an overview of the function and anatomy of the eye is needed. For the sake of simplicity, the discussion at hand will deal with mammalian eye makeup, as although other animal groups do have a similar anatomy, there are some differences. Even in mammals, there are slight differences in the eye makeup, many on a chemical or cellular level. Chief among these differences is the ability to see colour and the ability to see in low light. To understand the differences, it is important to understand how the human eye works and from that a derivative can be made to other mammalian species. The eye itself is composed of various components. The wall of the eye is made up of three different areas, the sclera, the cornea and the canals of the slim. Each has a different purpose. The sclera is a white membrane that keeps the eye its shape. It in turn is connected to a series of muscles that allow for the movement of the eye. These muscles being the medial rectus, inferior rectus, lateral rectus, inferior oblique, superior oblique and superior rectus. The cornea is a component of the front of the eye that is usually colourless and transparent and it is through this that light waves pass. The canals of the slem offer a series of small sinuses to drain fluid from behind the cornea. The middle layer of the eye is made up as well of various components, known as the uvea when spoken of as a group. Within this collective are the components of the uvea, the choroid, ciliary body and the iris. The ciliary body is made up of a muscle that aids in the function of the lens of the eye. The choroid acts as a blood supplier to the other areas of the eye as well as preventing the reflection of light inside the eye with the help of pigmented granules. The iris in turn is attached to the ciliary body and contains the pupil. The pupil is but an opening in the eye itself that allows for light to enter the eye and this light is controlled by the musculature of the iris. This iris is also the portion of the eye that is coloured. This coloration is what gives us blue eyes, grey eyes and every other shade imaginable due to pigmentation. The deciding factor of eye coloration then relies on the individual genetic makeup. This affects the two layers of the iris that create the coloration. The rear layer contains blue pigment, while the front layer contains either no pigment of black pigmentation called melanin. Depending on the level of melanin, the eye colour varies. If no melanin is present, then the eyes are blue. If no pigmentation appears in either layer, then an albino condition of pink is present. The innermost area of the eye is made of the retina. It is made of very specialised cells called receptor cells. These receptor cells come in two different forms, rods and cones. The fibres of these receptor cells form further back in the eye as the optic nerve that is crucial to the brain's recognition of an image. The receptor cells each serve a specialised purpose in the area of sight. Rods are cylindrical in nature. Within the rods is a portion that contains a photosensitive chemical known as rhodopsin that aids in the filtration of low level lights. The cones are more conical in shape and are crucial for colour recognition and intense light filtration. There are currently three forms of cones known, each unique due to a specialised photochemical pigment. 
when light passes through these components of the eye, these rods and cones, photoreceptors, are stimulated and the information is relayed to the brain to form the image. Now, to understand how the eye recognises light and hence images and lead to the why eye shine occurs, the physics of vision need to be looked at. Light is foremost a form of energy, radiant energy. As light travels from one source to another, it can be refracted, that is bent. The refraction bends the light at a different angle. This refraction is important in the ability to see as the curvature of the eye is such that a refraction of the light allows the light to be aimed into the retina, although some light will be lost in the process. In doing so, the image scene is inverted and compacted, similar to what occurs when a picture is reflected in a mirror. These properties of light refraction apply both in bright light, like daytime, as well as dark light, like nighttime, as well as intermediate lighting, such as conditions at dawn and dusk. In the typical eye that has no added component than stated prior, an image and image recognition is lessened as the light levels drop. Try walking into a room with no lights on from a room with all the lights on. For a short time, everything will be dark and out of focus. This is called eye blindness and is caused by the eye not getting enough light. However, in a short spell, limited image recognition will return, a process called dark adaptation. Within the photoreceptor called the rod, the chemical rhodopsin is the cause of dark adaptation. In bright light, this chemical is damaged, but when the light is lowered, the chemical reforms. Vitamin A allows for this to occur, and if this vitamin is diminished, the return of vision in the dark is slower. The opposite occurs when going from a dark room to a lit one. Now, in a species that lives a nocturnal existence or partial nocturnal existence, the ability to recognize images as prey, predator and safety is essential. To allow for more light, certain species have adapted another component in the eye. It is located on the retina and is called the tapetum lucidum. This tapetum essentially allows for a doubling of the light. With the aid of a white mirror-like substance called guanine, light passing through the retina is bounced back, allowing for two passes of light. This bounce back of the tapetum lucidum is what appears as the eye shine in these animal species. In primates, the prosimians, such as a lemur, exhibit such a feature as the tapetum lucidum, while the grey apes do not. Likewise, many other animal species in far-ranging groups show this characteristic. To most, it will be most familiar in a household pet, like the cat. Even humans who do not have this tapetum do possess a limited eye shine that can be seen in red eye images in some photographs. Now, the question of whether or not such a creature as Bigfoot could see in colour comes up at times as well. The problem here is that colour recognition comes down to chemical properties in the eyes as well as the presence of the photoreceptor cones. Additionally, all mammals that possess colour vision have a small indent on the retina called the fovea, in which these cones are organised. As was mentioned previously, the cones are made from three distinctly different types of pigments. Each, it has been thought, correlates to a colour, blue, green or red. These pigments react through chemical functions and create the colour vision people see. The lack or inhibition of one or more of these pigmentation cones causes the various forms of colour blindness. The strength of the light also plays a part in the colour recognition. For example, a light wavelength of 5000 to 5500 angstroms generate a green colour, while one of 6750 to 7000 create the red colour. Factored in as well are the elements of hue, brightness and saturation that enhance or diminish the intensity of colour depending on the viewing conditions and distances. The colour vision ability can be drawn to one thing. If a fovea is present, then the likelihood of colour vision to some extent is also present. This is not a hard and fast rule, but a good guide. For example, the great apes possess a fovea. 
and in all likelihood have a form of colour vision. While the night monkey from South America, for example, does not have a favea or any cones for that matter, so cannot possess colour vision. That is the crucial point. Colour vision is much more specialised for a daytime existence, for at night the ability to see colour is minimised due to insufficient light. To adapt to the insufficient light, some species have the tapered and lucidum to allow for enhancement of the light. However, the possibility of colour vision is more likely to occur. If humans and great apes possess colour vision to some extent, but do not possess the tapered and lucidum, and it is extracted that Bigfoot is a type of primate akin to the great ape or human, then the correlation to these primates can be loosely made. The ultimate answer though as to what kind of vision these creatures may have cannot be described as of yet. A species will be needed and to identify the vision capabilities it would have to be a relatively new species with the eyes intact as the information needed cannot be preserved in a skull only on the living tissue. <laughs>